Hello and welcome to Walk in GYN Care and our educational opportunities that we offer at Walk in GYN Care. Let's get started. Um, we have just created this video so that we can um, introduce ourselves, show you the flow, and welcome you to our family, and um, also set some ground rules and expectations. We really appreciate your interest in learning more about women's health um, and how we deliver great quality care to all women on a walk-in basis. And we are very proud that you have chosen us for a small part of your life's journey. And uh, we truly, truly hope that this uh, time enriches you and you come away with a wealth of information. Here's a brief hello from our founder. Hello, students, volunteers, um, and anyone else who's interested in shadowing and learning from us. I wanted to briefly introduce myself and um, you know, lay down some expectations and, and the, also the reason as to why uh, we offer these opportunities for you all um, at our centers. Um, I'm Dr. Aditi Gupta, as I'm sure some of you know. Um, I am an immigrant. I was studying in India, did my residency um, and training in India. And then I moved to the United States in 2004. Uh, since then, um, coming here, it's been a journey. And I have been fortunate enough to be able to gain higher education multiple times um, in India, in the United Kingdom, and in the United States, and um, now open multiple locations to be able to offer women's health services for women, not only on the East Coast, but also on the West Coast. Um, it's been a long journey. I don't need to get into all of it right now, but what I want you to understand is I understand the lack of good educational foundation, lack of good opportunities for us to gain that education and that platform where we can learn everything from ground up. Um, when I was struggling to um, get a foothold um, into this, this system, I sent thousands and thousands of letters to various practitioners all over the world um, to be able to get just one opportunity to volunteer or gain some experience. Um, this is why when I was able to open my own offices, I decided to open up the doors for students and volunteers um, across not only the United States, but across the world. And today uh, we are in the, at 12 years um, and We've had students and volunteers come in from across the world, gain residencies or gain nurse practitioner positions or physician assistant or medical school. And I'm really, really proud to be able to offer those services. At the same time, um, we do want you to understand that we do not charge for any of these um, services or opportunities that we are um, you know, rendering for you. So at the same time, we do expect you simply to please behave professionally um, and keep in mind the costs that are incurred by you being here. Um, so please be mindful and respectful of uh, the supplies, the, um, the, the stuff that you are using or engaging when you are in the premises. Um, at the same time, we do have some other ground rules um, that we're gonna lay out in the future presentation that's to follow right now. Um, but the way you can make the most of this uh, training program is by following the entire patient journey from the beginning to the end. Uh, and that will make you learn the ins and outs of not only caring for a patient, but also to see how um, the office runs and how um, the rest of the staff comes together as a team to provide the best possible care for the patient. And ultimately our goal is to be there for giving high quality 
stellar care to all women who walk through our doors. So um, welcome and join us in our mission to provide the awesomest, bestest, and simply great holistic care to all women. Thank you. Now we come to the ground rules. And this is, as I mentioned before, so that we can have a mutually rewarding relationship and actually benefit from each other. You learn something from us and we learn something from you. But also if you're here just to check a box, then I suggest you look elsewhere because uh, we do want an interactive relationship and an interactive experience for you. Uh, you will notice that all of our team members are extremely committed, compassionate, and very hardworking. And I call them hustlers. We hustle and we bustle. So get those roller skates on and be ready to move. Please do not waste that precious time that you're going to spend with us because time is the one thing that we can never get back. So make it worth it. Let's move on now. We all know the importance of dressing professionally. So please Google or look at what business or business casual attire means. No midriff expo uh, exposed, no short skirts, no low cut blouses, no hoodies, please. Wear your IDs, ask your site leaders or um, team members when you walk in on your first day and they will provide you an ID, uh, which should be displayed um, above the waist uh, with your name on it. Uh, please be courteous and be polite and introduce yourself to not only the staff, but every time you interact with a patient, say, my name is Amanda and I am volunteering at Walk-In Jiva and is it okay if I'm here? It is important that you ask for permission to be there and the patient knows who you are. Please, no foul, loud or abusive language, Please put your belongings away in the designated area. Whichever office you go to, ask the team members where our personal belongings supposed to be put. Then please ask for permission and put away your bag or a food or whatever it is that you have with you. No food or drink is allowed at all in any workspace. Uh, so please be mindful of that. And if you do need a doctor's coat. We have clean, uh, dry clean coats that we do um, allow the students to wear. So please ask the team members and they will guide you uh, to the correct location. And of course, remember to return the coat at the end of the day. Please, this is the key, avoid unnecessary use and wastage. Remember, we are paying for all those supplies, all the things, that you're going to end up using while you're here for your educational experience. So for example, if you're not going to be examining a patient, there is no need for you to don an extra pair of gloves when you're in the room just listening. Uh, when you do use gloves, please make sure that you're doing multiple activities at the same time and use the vinyl gloves instead of the more expensive ones. Um, so there are little things that your team members can guide you, uh, but please be mindful of the cost of running an organization. Uh, please also bring your own laptop and notepads if needed. Uh, we do have enough, but sometimes we can be short because we have other providers, team members that require the use of all of the workstations there. Of course, uh, needless to say, maintain cleanliness wipe the surfaces down. Um, again, use the uh, disinfectant spray that's provided. Do not unnecessarily use extra wipes. You do not need to use wipes for that purpose. And please do not just sit around on a stool because as I mentioned, you are here to optimize your educational experience. Every single minute that you're there is an opportunity to learn something. So sitting around is not going to help um, you in any way. And of course, please do not be on your phone. Uh, and we are pretty strict about these things. If we do find you on your phone, on social media, while you're supposed to be learning, we will send you home. And these are some requests from our team members and some expectations. So the way you can optimize your learning experience is by following the patient journey from the beginning to the end. 
And you will hear this word patient journey over and over as we go through this presentation, because we are hoping that the repetition makes sense to you. Please respect, as I mentioned earlier, patient and staff privacy. If you find some staff members having a private conversation, then please give them that space. And of course, ask every patient for permission. And 99% of the patients will allow you to be there, but we have to take their permission. And this one is key. Complete your patient journey template that was provided to you before the rotation via email, or if you don't have it, ask the front desk. And remember to hand it in every single day to the front desks so that that can be sent to the admin team because we want to learn from you too. And we also want to know the quality of your experience here. Uh, please spread the word about Walk-In GYN Care and support us on social media, review us on Google. We are on Facebook, Instagram as at Walk-In GYN. Um, and then we are on Google. Your support will help us a lot to spread the word amongst women who really do need us. This is an example of patient journey. The journey of a patient begins from before coming into the office all the way to when they walk out. So, which are the components of the in-office patient journey? Uh, you just saw a walkthrough video, but um, the components of the in-office patient journey are check-in, and the check-in starts with the second the patient walks in the door, meaning, welcome to walk-in GYN care. And then they wait in the waiting room, then they go to the restroom um, or before, and they pee in the urine cup, which has to be deposited uh, in the lab. Then they get a triage, which can happen in the room or in the lab where they get the vital signs and the initial intake questions, which are taken by the medical assistant. Then the provider um, does a complete exam. And then depending on what is needed, either ultrasound or lab work or nothing, they may undergo those next two steps in the patient journey. The provider closes out the visit by giving the patient a summary of what is to be expected when the follow-up is needed and what the plan is. And then the patient walks to the checkout desk and they get a follow-up appointment and they are, get asked the exit questions regarding their visit. So a patient journey is not just in office, it is pre-visit, in office, and then post-visit. So now we can touch uh, upon the pre-visit touch points how does a patient even come to us, right? Just like how did you come to us? The patient can either call us, email us, visit our website, or come even through social media, Google Maps, friend or family referral, or use the patient portal 
to schedule an appointment, reach out to us. And you as a student or a volunteer may be asked to answer the phone at times. This is why uh, we're putting this in here to tell you that every single uh, component of this pre-visit touch point is important in the way the patient's satisfaction may be at the office. Now the post-visit touch points, again, the journey doesn't end when the patient comes in, uh, the journey and just keeps going, right? Because patient was given a prescription or patient needs a follow-up. And so uh, the post-visit touch points can be pharmacy. What if the prescription didn't get to the pharmacy? The patient's going to be upset. Uh, if the pharmacist is unable to fill because it's not covered by the insurance. So all of that reflects on our practice. Phone call, if patient has a follow-up question, they may call us. Then online reviews, a happy patient or unhappy patient, either way, they can post online reviews, which again, reflect their patient journey. Social media, you know, people use Instagram, Twitter, whichever methods, Reddit, um, to uh, discuss their patient journeys. Review links, uh, we send internal review links through our internal software system, um, which is used to, again, touch upon every single touch point in the patient journey so that we can continue to improve our care for them. Dinner, you might be sitting with your girlfriends at dinner and over wine, you discuss uh, what you need to do to get to a GYN. And someone says, well, hey, I can't get in. I need an appointment. I have this problem. And then this person who just had an excellent journey with us will be like, hey, have you heard of walk-in GYN? Can, you can just walk in. And then of course, email. So every single post-visit touch point will affect uh, patient's perception of um, how the journey was. So again, to summarize, pre-visit, visit, post-visit visit is all a part of patient journey. This is a sample touch point checklist that you will receive when you start your rotation with us. Um, you can print multiple copies or you can get extra copies printed by the front desk. Anyone can print them for you. This is an example of just the check-in portion. We want you to observe the greeting, start performing the greeting once you get comfortable, what your takeaways were, and if you had any recommendations. So the entire process is something that we need you to participate in. So fill out each section, ask for copies, turn it in daily, this is absolutely mandatory. Whether you're a medical student, nurse practitioner, PA or physician, we require you to follow the entire patient journey and please not just shadow the provider. Because as I mentioned, every single component is valuable for your own learning as well. Back to the entire process, um, check-in, waiting room, restroom, triage, provider visit, lab work, ultrasound, exit consult and checkout. So as I mentioned earlier, you can learn as much or as little as you want from this very enriching rotation. If you immerse yourself, you will come away with a wealth of information. If you're here just to bide the time, then I strongly suggest, please look elsewhere. Another glimpse into who we are.
Just to close real quickly, I know it's been a long presentation and um, there are lots of videos in there. And the, the emphasis, as you can see, is on teamwork, touching the touch points, and going through um, the entire rotation uh, with respect and professionalism. So there are many touch points that we obviously have not touched upon in this journey. Um, so, you know, we're, we keep refining, we keep working, we keep learning. Uh, so let's all join hands together to do our part to strive to standardize stellar service for all women across the globe at Walk in Jiva and Care, where we empower women through inner wellness. Thank you again for trusting us uh, with your rotations and um, good luck. <laughs>